What's up, guys? This is Kefis. All right, so we are back with more leveling in WoW, you guys. Still in Stranglethorn Vale. We're still off on that island killing these water elementals, getting these bracers. I feel like this quest has always been a part of the game. Like, this is like one of those quests that I feel like I did before Cataclysm. I don't know. But, anywho, we're still in Stranglethorn Vale. And just like always, you know how long it takes to get through Stranglethorn Vale. I feel like we've been here for like several episodes. This is, this is going to be a saga. If this is a series, this is like the saga of Stranglethorn Vale or something like that. So, anyway... Yeah, so the last couple weeks we, we talked about stuff going on in the community and maybe a little bit controversial, so I do apologize if I haven't done any crazy damage. If you guys are all still here, if the world has not ended uh, with those topics, then uh, this week we will try to maybe step back from all that and go on to something that's not as controversial, although I do feel like no matter what you talk about these days, it's probably going to be controversial. So I do talk about things that, you know... Uh, Viewers ask me to talk about, which is why you know I talked about the things I talked about last couple weeks, and also things that interest me. And I have had a viewer ask me uh, what my thoughts are on the future of WoW and what I think is coming down the pike. I think uh, with uh, some leaks that have happened, you know, uh, people are starting to speculate. They're getting excited. BlizzCon is coming up in a few months, and yeah, people are wanting to know. People are. Speculating. It's fun to do. You know, it's, it's funny when you watch people react to, like, leaks and speculation. People are always like, oh, it's, it's, it's so stupid. We know it's not even real. And it's like, I mean, let people have their fun and speculate, you know? <laughs> like, it's fine. It's, it's fine for people, people to get hype. It means people are still interested and excited. I think leaks and speculations are fun. You never know if they're true or not anyways these days, so who cares? I think I got to use this item... Yes, I do. There we go. Okay, so we talk to her, and then she gives us the next quest, which is not on the island. I thought it might be on the island, but it's okay. So we gotta go back to the Murlocs, and then go down and kill the bag, bang, bag, Bangla, Bangladesh? I don't know. Okay, so we might even tame another pet while we're here. But anywho, okay, so spe speculation. Yeah, alright. So, also, just, uh, just want to say this now, since we're here. It sucks that I can't use my Aqua Strider to get across the water because the mount changes. So yeah, that's one of the downsides. Like I said it would be, it's kind of annoying. I don't know if you can get mount equipment at low levels or not. I haven't tried, but uh, if anybody out there knows, maybe tell me, because I, I don't know. But it's all right. We already got past the water. I could complain about it longer than it took me to get through the water, so it's fine. But yeah, so <laughs> speculation. Um, there are a number of things that... There is a number of things. Are a number of things? There are a number of things that Blizzard can do uh, in the future of WoW. And I, it's, it's funny because people always say, well, we're getting close to the end because they're running out of things. It's like, you know, they can always come up with new things at any given moment. There are all kinds of mysteries left in the world. There are planets that haven't been discovered. There's, I mean, a whole other side of Azeroth that hasn't necessarily been discovered. And, I mean, there's, there's lots of things that they can do. There's alternate timelines that we can visit, who knows? I mean, there's there's anything, anything is possible. We've still got the infinite dragon flight, the the dragon, the evil dragon flight of time, with uh, Murazond, the corrupted Norse Dormu. That's still out there as a storyline that hasn't been wrapped up. We've got all the old gods, which we are dealing with now with Nzoth, Nzoth, or however you say it. And yeah, we've. Uh, what else is there? There's. The light, the, the new thing, the, the corrupted, you know, light, light, what is it, light bound, I guess, is what they're called, the light bound orcs. So, the extremist light. And that's another angle that we haven't even, that's a completely new thing. So, there's all that. There's the resurrection of, uh, what's her name, Menethil, Kalia Menethil, uh, being resurrected as a light undead of some kind. So, there's all this crazy mystical stuff going on that... They could go on and, you know, and take it in a direction. And it's all going to be interesting things for them to explore. It'll be interesting to see how they do it. They seem like... This is something that I kind of don't like right now. Is we, we tend to 
I guess to try to you know give give the expansion a little diversity and 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 not make it super one note, we are kind of like putting a lot of things in one expansion. So we've got the battle for Azeroth where we just also happen to be dealing with Azara. And in my opinion, Azara could have been an entire expansion just with her. Like she's a big deal. You know, it's not like something that you just want to oh, one raid and she's done. You know, I I, I don't I don't, I don't know if that's what's going to happen. It seems like she's not going to be completely out of the story after this without spoiling anything um but you know it's it's one of those things that i i liked the idea of you know i like the idea of an expansion having i mean i, I guess we're never going to have another lich king but th the thing that really worked with that expansion is that we knew what the end goal was and it was just a matter of making our way through northrend through one continent Big continent, but nonetheless, it was a big, long war campaign, you know. And then we kind of did, you know, venture off and deal with some old god stuff with uh, Yog saron right? Which was which was cool because that was also happened to be in Northrend. It was a threat that we had to deal with while we were there. And then we turned our attention back to the Lich King's forces. Um, and I, I think that was nice because it, it gave us a focus. It told a central story it wasn't disjointed a lot of times if you try to jam too many stories into one main story you're going to have a disjointed story look at iron man 2 it was a movie that i actually like it a lot more than a lot of people do but the biggest problem that it had is it tried to fit too many iron man stories into one Woo! there's that rare again um might as well kill him again get more xp again um, but they could have made like three Iron Man movies out of that one movie, if not more, because they decided to jam in so many plots. And I guess they just didn't want to make that many movies, but the price that they paid was it felt very just dis disjointed and it was hard to get through all of that and tell a complete story while because they were trying to tell so many of them. And that's something that WoW has always had going for it, is it's always had so many plot threads and so many enemies and so many wo uh, interwoven storylines, kind of like Game of Thrones, and that works as well as long as you keep the main central theme of the expansion and the story that you're trying to tell now at the forefront. If you try to tell too many other stories, then it gets a little tough. So, like, because, like, all the stories in Lich King's expansion, you know, went towards... The Lich King. They all pointed towards Arthas in, in the, the final fight. And that's kind of, in my opinion, how you have to do it. That way you tie everything together and it all kind of works. Um, so I'm kind of hoping that even though we have like so many old gods to get through and we have the light issue and we have all these things, that when we move into the future, we don't put all of those things into one expansion or like kill off a bunch of villains in a very short amount of time. It, it, another way of saying it is, let's hope they don't blow their wad too quickly, right? <laughs> um, but I, I like to think that people right now, I'm not really that into it, but I think a lot of people are really into the old god stuff, and I think that's what people are going to want to see next. And I could see them going that way, maybe the Shadowlands, uh, you know, something like that, maybe something... Maybe the Dragon Isles. There, there, there were some leaks about that. That's another thing that would be kind of cool. I would like the. I would love the idea of exploring multiple islands, um, you know, or or whatever. Maybe that would be something that we could do. Maybe we could use the navies of the two factions that we've kind of acquired with the pro. Well, I guess the Horde Navy fleet's kind of been wiped out, but that doesn't mean they can't rebuild. They have the. They have the knowledge, the technology that still exists. So. Um, you know, they could, they could rebuild and, and all that kind of stuff. Who knows? Maybe we'll sail the, uh, the Dragon Isles and, uh, you know, we, we can get into maybe, I don't know if this is connected or not. Cause I don't know a lot of the, a lot of the story that's left really. I really don't. I, there's a lot that I need to learn, but, and that's cool because I don't really, I, I want to learn through the game. So I'm, I'm cool with knowing that there's so much out there that we could still learn about. I'm so focused on like getting all this ore and herbs and stuff. So I do apologize. We'll get through this leveling experience eventually. Um, but there's this stuff with, uh, with what's his name? Um, sorry, I'm looking. Oh, I gotta go all the way up there. We're gonna go down here and kill the, kill the, uh, the hunted uh, prey first, Bang Bangladesh or whatever it's called. But yeah, so the thing that interests me is the black dragon flight. Are we going to deal with uh, what's his name? I can't even think of his name. 
Nefarian's last son. Uh, I can't even think of his name right now, but you guys know what I'm talking about. The guy with the turban in P Pandaria kind of helped uh, the events of Wad take place. Yeah. I'm interested to see if he'll play a part in the future. But he was kind of like, he was against... Oops. Oh, shoot. This is a problem. He was against the Burning Legion. He obviously was afraid of that happening, but it's always possible that he could be working with the old gods. I mean, it was the old gods that drove his dad nuts, so it's possible that the old gods could be working with him as well. Uh, that's possibility, or it could be he's his own thing. That is also possible. But, you know, it's one of those things that, uh, you know, it's it's going to be interesting to see what direction that they that they go in with the story. And it's I'm, I'm assuming that old gods might be next, and they might also, you know, deal with... If, if we go and deal with the Void, maybe that's when the evil side of the light will start to reveal itself um, as we, you know, fight the void. Maybe the light will come apart, you know, become a part of the story and we'll learn more about that, you know, which has been pretty mystical and and kind of like a mystery up until now, the, the, how the light even works. And, you know, we have our theories, but that's about all we have. Also, totem, get away from me, bro. Um, so that's always possible. I would, I would, I'm, I personally am more interested in the evil side of the light and where that's going than I am the void personally. That doesn't mean that the void wouldn't be cool. It's just that, I don't know. It's, it's not super, super interesting to me. I'm not a big fan of like the Cthulhu. What do you call that? That, that style of villain or whatever. It's, it's whatever. I mean, it's, it's neat and I'm, it's creepy. And I think that's kind of cool. It'll be neat to kind of, you know, see a bunch of creepy stuff like that, like void stuff. I mean, whenever I go to, um, Najatar and that freaking, what's his name? Na uh, Na Inzoth, I'm assuming it's Inzoth is like whispering to me. It freaks me out every single time. Cause I'm just sitting there like farming ore or whatever, flying around. And all of a sudden I hear whispers. I'm like, bruh, could you not <laughs> creepy? Uh, all right, here, here we go. I kill the white tiger. Um, so, I don't know. I think that would be cool. I can't see an entire expansion just being Void stuff, though, so I'm not sure. I don't know, man. It's tough to think about how that's going to work. But, I mean, it would be fine. I'm sure people would be into it, but I'm. it's really interesting. I, I kind of wonder if, if we're heading... Because it seems like the Alliance and the Horde has been played out so much that, you know, are they going to do that again? I mean, they can't just keep rehashing that same story. I Whoops. I messed up i gotta sell stuff but at the same time that's a that's an integral part of the game experience is having multiple factions so you have to wonder if like are they going to you know are they going to just drop that completely we no longer have factions or are they going to create new factions and it's possible that we could have a, like factions of light and factions of void that could be the the future i don't know um, but I do think that they, either they're going to replace the current factions with new ones and you get to pick your faction and any, everybody can be on either faction or they're going to keep factions as they, as they are and kind of, um, just kind of put them to the, to the, to the back burner. And it's, it's like, you're still part of your faction. They'll still be PVP and that's never going to change because that's the game, but we're just not going to really acknowledge it anymore. And we're going to pretend like that doesn't exist in the storyline. That's likely what I think they're going to do at least for now until they think of something. But at the same time, I could totally see them, you know, trying to do something big for the game that would make things relevant and at least get people talking again. Like, Holy crap, they changed factions or they removed factions. And wow, can you believe it? Whoa. You know, that kind of thing. So, it's entirely possible that, uh, let me find a flight path here, because we got to go all the way back up to the Rebel Camp. Rebel, not Raven Hill, that would be too far, Rebel Camp. Um, so, yeah, I'm really interested to see where they take that part of the story. And, you know, I, I think that another thing to think about is, um, you know, where do we go after the, the Void and stuff like that? I mean... So, the thing about all this celestial stuff, the space stuff, the titans, the void, and all that kind of stuff, I think that's all fine and good. I know it's always been part of the story, but this happens in a lot of stories, like, whether it's, like, a TV show, like an anime, or something like, um, a, a, like a Final Fantasy game. I mean, a good example is, like, look, watch Dragon Ball, the original series where Goku is doing tournaments and then watch Dragon Ball Super where he's fighting with 
the deities of alternate universes and he's seeing the ultimate supreme ruler of the world so like things always escalate right um in final fantasy 7 you start off being a soldier fighting against you know people who are like you're basically like a uh I don't know, like a freedom fighter. Well, you're actually technically part of a kind of like a terrorist group, I guess. But you're trying to protect the planet. And that expands, but it goes into like this this rivalry between Cloud and Sephiroth, which goes into this crazy thing where Sephiroth's like some kind of angel and he's trying to destroy the world and you end up fighting some crazy celestial beings. And, you know, that always happens with Final Fantasy, it seems. Oh, I gotta go all the way back over there again. Um, where... I wonder if I could have gone back there sooner. I don't know. But, in, you know, Final Fantasy VIII, you know, you're you're part of, like, some college kind of thing. It's called a garden. You're a seed. You become a seed member. You're doing missions. Next thing you know, you're fighting some crazy celestial being that was, like, in your ring or something like that. I don't know. It's And it always goes that way. You always end up fighting this, like, something crazy at the end. It's kind of, like, not really fully connected to the story, but kind of is, but kind of isn't. And it's weird. You know... And so as things kind of scale up, I tend to lose interest in the story. Personally, I'm not into the the whole like oh crazy earth-shattering war fighting some crazy celestial being that you've never really seen before or you've heard about, but it's you're suddenly so powerful that you can fight these, you know, celestial beings, these gods and and crazy powerful creatures or whatever. And it's like where do you go from there? And that's, I guess, it's like, on one hand, it's like the natural evolution of a story. Like, I mean, that's where it's headed, right? Oh, look at that. We got the nesting where stuff done. Um, but on the flip side, I really enjoy the smaller scale stories. I mean, even in BFA, I like all of the stories that happen on Cool Taras and Zandalar. I'm into the smaller scale issues that the tribes and the races are having you know, that kind of stuff is interesting. But when you get into like, um, oh, Azeroth is bleeding and there's Sargeras plummeted this giant sword into the planet and it's sticking out of the planet and what's going to happen to the Earth is going to die. It's all kind of crazy to me. And I'm like, man, I just like it when there's like a normal war or fighting over some territory or something like that. I don't know. I know that, I don't know, I guess you can't keep doing that stuff forever. But to me, that's just more interesting. It's more, you know, on a level that I'm like, yeah, I can I can see me being part of that. I can't see me fighting a Titan like Sargeras or fighting the Void Lords. Like, I mean, just looking at how crazy Nazoth was in that cinematic, I'm like, dude, I, I mean, I guess it's fine. We fight him. It's whatever. But. I just, it's hard to believe that that's, that I'm going, like, that our characters are going to become so powerful that they can even stand up to something like that. It just seems kind of crazy to me. I don't know. I mean, I guess we have to deal with it at some point, but it's just kind of like, am I supposed to be doing something here? Um, it's just kind of weird that, the, oh, that, that summons the thing. Okay. It's just kind of weird that that's where it's going. Like, whoa, that's, that's a bit out there you know so some people dig it and that's cool i'm not knocking it i'm just saying that as a story uh it doesn't interest me as much when things get that high stakes personally i'm more into the to the smaller scale stories so i'm hoping that we get more smaller scale stories um another theory that i heard is that you know maybe we will reset the world or something because i mean azeroth's not looking too good right now and maybe what's going to end up happening is that, whoops, hit the microphone, is that, you know, the Titans feel like they're going to have to, oh, hi, Sindal, guess we'll fight you again. Um, the Titans are looking like they're going to have to rebuild Azeroth and everyone from scratch, almost like resetting the universe like in Futurama. I don't know how much people would like that, but I could also see that being a possibility. They can remake the world that way. Um and and reset you know a lot of things bring characters back to life that are dead tell different stories but also have that be the continuation of the main story that's also something that's been done in other stories that has worked a little bit um i don't i don't know how satisfying that will be for people uh something that's happening in mortal Kombat right now not 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 to spoil anything but they're actually about to do what seems like another reboot and the way they're doing it is they're literally remaking the universe um 
and I, people have mixed feelings on it. It's it's whatever. I mean, it's part of the story. Uh, but it's it's weird, like because technically, I guess the characters that you know are technically going to die, and it's just like whoa, that's a little bit crazy. But at least then they can get back into retelling the story, you know, or or telling new stories with the same characters and keep the stakes from getting too crazy high. Um, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. I, I part of me kind of likes that more than just going off and fighting all these celestial beings personally. But, you know, again, just remember, that's just my opinion. I don't, you don't have to agree with it. It's just, that's just how I feel. Um, but I, I don't know. There's, there's, there's a lot of things. I think we're going to be doing some void stuff next. Then we're going to be dealing with the light. I think eventually Murzond and the infinite dragon flight is going to come in play. Maybe that's where we go into a different timeline, reset the universe. Something like that could happen. That may be the only way to save everything and try again. Um, you know, that, that's something that, that could happen. And, you know, who knows? Maybe they'll update the uh, the graphics and maybe they'll make a new game. Maybe they won't and then we'll just keep this game. But we'll be starting all over again. Maybe that's how the level squish comes. Um, but as a story mode, that's kind of what I think is heading down the pike. Um, and then, you know, we can always talk about... Uh, features that I think will be added. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, let me know by clicking that like button. And feel free to share it with your friends so they can enjoy it as well. Don't forget, you can subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon to be notified as soon as new videos are posted. You can also follow me on Facebook and Twitter, and if you'd like, you can support this channel on Patreon. Links to all of this can be found in the description below. This is Kefis, until next time.